We are encountering much more complex problems than we have in the past. Um, and we're realizing that there are some deeply entrenched underlying causes and unless we're able to understand this complexity of the context, to understand these underlying causes um, and to address them, that we aren't going to be able to make the change that, that we want in people's lives or to trigger the change. And so it's important for us to really look at transformative approaches, to look at what prevents um, new technologies from achieving the impact that they want or what what's standing in the way of, of women or poor people being able to uh, improve their lives and livelihoods and I think gender transformative approaches is helps us get there it helps us understand what gender barriers what what types of inequitable relations stand in the way of those types of impacts and outcomes. The question of how uh, technology in the CG affects labour productivity and affects the distribution of returns from women's labour. That, that is a question we can see more clearly now is something we've got to focus our gender research on. Other questions have to do with the distribution of profits in the value chain. Many of the new uh, CG programmes are taking a value chain framework uh, we know that it's important to focus on gender. It's not enough to just increase productivity or to say that um, if we do so, everybody in the household will benefit because sometimes the rules of behavior that govern how men and women share the profits from a change in technology or a change in markets may create disincentives for women to invest in an agricultural, a particular type of agricultural enterprise. What I think is really interesting about gender transformative approaches is that it's a collection of uh, ways of doing things from research and from development that set our sights beyond just integrating gender in development towards something much more fundamental. It's about changing the relationships, the norms, the attitudes, the structures that need to be changed in order to create a more gender equal world. And this is uh, the whole issue of the importance of articulating very clearly what the theory of change is as to why we think um, improved increases in productivity and the development of sustainable production will be correlated with increases in gender equality. One of the challenges it seems to me this organization has is really looking at what are the endpoints. There's been a lot of discussion about is changing gender the means and the ends. What's really different about the gender transformative approach is that it would potentially change the ability of the CG to have more sustained impact. Uh, it's very important to have sex disaggregated data, but more importantly, we need gender disaggregated data, meaning that we need to see, in terms of gender inequalities, how is the situation presented. But beyond that, it's a question actually of mindset. So men and women, boys and girls, they need to be deeply transformed in a way that is going to promote uh, the dignity of the humankind. This is one area where I think there's opportunity for collaboration. Another is really looking around these gender issues, which is really, uh, from my perspective, cross-cutting to health, to agriculture, to economics, to probably every field out there, um, that you have to look at the gender relations, whether you actively work on changing them or not, but you certainly have to explore what those gender dynamics are in terms of either creating barriers to you reaching your outcomes or being a facilitator to reaching your outcomes because there are gender norms that are very positive It can help you get to your end. And it's important for us to see this as a learning mechanism, as a hypothesis that we're trying to test, as a kind of bold and contagious experiment. The importance now for the system as a whole to uh, unify, in a sense, its theory of change about gender, unify and elaborate its theory of change, and that we do have, um, to the extent possible, uh, an effort to 
build uh, what, what you could call a meta-study. I come from the health discipline and one of the things I've realized since being here is that I think our discourse on the need to look at gender norms and gender transformative change is a bit further along. We've recognized quite a while in the literature and in our practice that unless you look at underlying gender norms that can be both barriers and facilitators to change, um, we've also been able to develop some tools, some approaches, some scales both on the research side and the practice side that I think could have some very applicable use in the field of agriculture to look at gender norms and to change gender norms um, as appropriate for the field. And when you are empowering uh, women uh, through the gender transformative approach, it ends up empowering also men and it creates a very good relationship between men and women. It means that both men and women are going to be, to, to be working together, they are going to be planning together, and the end result is going to, 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 to lead to positive relationships, and it implies that life of both men and women is going to be uh, positive. I think one of the most important things is that that transformational process for people, um, especially at communities and households, has to really be driven by them. It's really a process of questioning what is happening in terms of current gender norms, how that those norms may benefit them, or how they might actually be paying a price, if I can put it that way, for some of the gender norms that are currently existing. But I don't think we can tell people what they need to transform to. That's a process they need to go through um, by, you know, with themselves, by themselves as, as individuals, together as families, together as communities. And again, I think in the arena of social and behavior change, we've come up with some of those tools that might be quite useful in this context. We're all looking for a quick and easy solutions, results tomorrow. And the reality is that this type of approach, to really get it right, will take a bit more time than what short-term research agendas can often deliver. So understanding the time scale and getting the time, having some short-term wins, I think, will be important. Another risk has to do with the overall scale of impact. At the moment, we're really looking at uh, intra-household redistribution of res responsibilities and to some extent structural changes, getting it right at the community level, getting it right at national level in terms of access to resources and that sort of thing. Only when we start hitting national level and beyond can we demonstrate a significant broad impact. And there's a bit of a challenge between the quality and depth of change that happens through gender transformational approaches at household level and really making sure that women and men are benefiting equally, as opposed to enabling this to work for millions of people. I still think there are some very relevant tools and approaches that can be taken from the field of public health, and specifically from the field of social and behavior change communication, which looks at the context in which people live, including gender norms, before we can even talk about making any changes, and using the research that we find to design our programs. And also our programs are theory-based, um, and so I think some of the theories of behavior change and normative change would be very useful in the agricultural and gender context. Once men are involved in a process that is basically meant to, to empower women, that how it, it, it ends up touching different sectors, including uh, business, agriculture, health. There have been you know, decades of thinking about gender or about agriculture systems, but in different disciplines of work, social scientists have been thinking about it, physical scientists have been thinking about it. And I think it's time that those fields really do need to come together and this kind of workshop and this kind of program, research program, offers the opportunity to do that. One of the things that seems very exciting that's come, uh, that's been a discussion as part of this meeting and underlying theme is the need for partnership, partnership at all levels within institutions, donors, communities. From my perspective, I think there's a lot of opportunities for partnerships between the fields of agriculture and the fields of public health as um, it seems that the approaches have been a bit siloed or a lot of the funding has been siloed and a lot of those partnerships really haven't been um, formed or strengthened or have, a, have had a lot of 
or have had a lot of opportunities to work together um, and see what that collaboration might yield. One of the exciting areas where this is beginning to happen is in the field of nutrition, where we're looking both at social and behavioral change approaches to bring about better nutrition outcomes and working with the agricultural community to have better inputs into the agriculture, to have um, make people aware of other options they can have in terms of crops that they grow, in terms of what they can put on their table to eat. So putting people on a fair, on a level playing ground um, in terms of gender is not just about uh, social fairness, it has an intimate knock-on effect with how effective our technologies are, how good we are at increasing overall productivity and the returns to inputs like, like labour, for example. How does our learning around gender issues, our learning around social change, how does that intersect with what we understand about agriculture systems? And therefore, how do we understand change will take place in future? I would believe it would be one of the critical components of what helps CG to grow and to address uh, a context in which Rural people are moving more to urban areas and yet we're still going to have to feed a growing population where the demographics of the world will be different. And, and by actually paying attention to social relationships and norms and structures, we should be able to grapple with that new world in a different way.